Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. 2017. Double honor. Double honor. That becomes your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the month of March. And the prophetic focus of this month is that what wisdom is this? We are taking the scriptures from the book of Matthew chapter 6, 13, verse number 54. Say, what wisdom is this? Can you say to me, say, what, what? wisdom is this? Shout later, what wisdom, what wisdom? is this? Yes. Amen. 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 This month is dedicated to the teaching and learning about the wisdom of God. About what? Say the wisdom of God. Can I hear your voice? Say the wisdom of God. Amen. Amen. So the teaching every as we meet here shall be engaging the wonders of divine wisdom. Or we can call it engaging the wonders of the wisdom of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you set to hear the word? Yes. Amen. Amen. So let us look what is wisdom. What is wisdom? Yesterday we saw that there are four kinds of wisdom. Number one, we saw that there is the earthly wisdom, there is a sensual wisdom, there is devilish wisdom, and then there is the wisdom of God. Wisdom of what? Of God. There are four classes of wisdom. According to the book of James, chapter 13, up to 17, talking about, and this kind of wisdom that will come from above, it is earthly, it is sensual, devilish, and also there is another wisdom that comes from above. Say, it comes from above. Yes. Hallelujah. So that's the wisdom we are focusing on, the wisdom that comes from God, that comes from above. Amen. Amen. And we saw that. The earthly wisdom is the one you are born with. You are born with the earthly wisdom. That means if a baby is born, he does not go to locate. He knows where the breast is and begin to suck the, 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 the milk from the mother. Okay? It is natural. You are born with it. Say it is natural. Yeah. You know this is fire? You avoid it. You know this is trailer coming? You clear the road. It is natural to everybody to have that wisdom. Amen. Say natural wisdom. Natural. Now we have what you call sensual wisdom. This one you get it as you go to school, as you are learning. As you learn, your senses are exercised. Amen. You learn, you are trained until you become skillful in a certain area. Maybe a doctor will require several years, amen, to learn to become a doctor. That one is not, you are not born with it. That one you acquire by learning. Say, I acquire it by learning. Amen. It's called sexual wisdom. Sensual what? It's of the mind. Praise the Lord. And then we call devilish wisdom. This one is with the one which they will worship, witches and wizards inquire to destroy the lives of people. Amen? Are you understanding? A witch can come here and supersort some several cars and some, some few people will die. When you go to look for the blood, it's not there. Hello? It's called demolish wisdom. Say demolish wisdom. Okay? Can you understand what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Demolish wisdom. That one is operated by witches, wizard, devotion, and they learn from whatever quarters they learn and they begin to do. Even somebody who is very learned, somebody is very learned, you can find him going to witches and wizards to, to collect that kind of wisdom. Maybe to win elections or to do something else. Okay? Say devilish wisdom. Now, there's another wisdom 
which is above that wisdom. So we say the wisdom. Say an insight. 
<laughs> so he interpreted the dream of two people. And it came to pass as the way he interpreted. Now it came for Pharaoh. Pharaoh now had also a dream. They looked for everyone to interpret. It was no one could interpret the dream. And then one person who was in prison said, Ah, there's a young man who interpreted a dream. The, way, the day you stole us from the prison, we had this, this, and this dream. He explained to the king, he said, and the king said, Go and call him. So Joseph appeared before him. Let us go to the book of Genesis 41. Genesis 41.
where we were in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, we continue with that verse, we understand that they are down. He's talking about the wise man and also the foolish man. Amen. 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 Now, let us look at verse number 26. And everyone who hears the sense of man and does, does them not, I would like him to be a foolish man. To be a what? Foolish man. Who built his house upon the sand, and the rain descend, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon the house, and it failed, and great was the fall of it. Amen. Anyone who builds his life outside the word of God, when crisis comes, they must fall. They must do what? Say they must fall. Amen. One day, Peter went for fishing the entire night. They, catch, they caught nothing. Then Jesus, who is the word of God, appeared on the sea the following day, borrowed the boat of Simon, preached to the people, and then after finishing preaching, he told Peter, go to the leading. You can imagine telling somebody who has an experience of fishermen for many years, and they know the best time to catch fish is at night, not day. And you are telling him, go to the lead. It looks very foolish. Is that not true? Very foolish. We go to the deep to catch fish, but that was the wisdom of the hour. Said the wisdom of the hour. Yes, it was the wisdom of the hour. So they obeyed, went to the deep, and as he get the first catch, it was very heavy. He said, Ah, the nets are breaking. He began to back on his friends. Other boats came. They filled their own boats, the other boats, and the other boats. Said business breakthrough. Yes, business breakthrough. By following what the word of God says, then breakthrough begins to happen your way. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I need the wisdom that comes from scriptures. Amen. So the first one comes from the Holy Spirit. The other one comes from what? From the Bible. Praise the Lord. Say, I need the wisdom of God. Say, I need it. All the days of my life. So, in this Bible, it is full of wisdom. This Bible shows you how to build your marriage. It tells to the husband, love your wives as the way Jesus loved the church. And also it tells the woman, submit to the husband. That's the wisdom of the Bible, the wisdom of God. But many women will not submit. So therefore, they are crisis in the marriage is continual and continues every day because they are not they don't want to build their marriage according to this law which is the word of god say so this word of god it is that law where i build my marriage my business my health everything concerning my life amen when you hear the sayings of jesus and you do them then heaven comes to the surprise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's see another definition of wisdom. Wisdom can be said to be to gain insight or a divine insight gain in the prayer of inquiry. Say the prayer of inquiry. Prayer of what? Inquiry. When David wants to go to any battle, before he goes to any battle, he begins to inquire to God by praying to God, Father, how am I? Should I go to this battle? Which way should this be? He will not face any enemy before he hears from God. Amen. Because he knew until he hears from God, that's how he's going to overcome every battle. Praise the Lord. So there's some wisdom, you get it in the altar of prayer. Altar of what? Say altar of prayer. Amen. Let us look in the book of Jeremiah 33, verse number 3. The book of Jeremiah 33, and verse number 3. Say, I need the wisdom of God to triumph in this life. The Bible says, call upon me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Amen. Say there are some things I don't know. 
Uh, don't never, never assume that you know everything. It's not true. You don't know anything. Inquire from God. Hallelujah. When God called me to ministry, number one, I did. I inquired. I told him, where is this ministry you wanted to be? I thought, in my mind, I thought it was in Nairobi. But God told me it should be in Juja. So I saw all the way from Uruguay to Juja. Ah, because that's where I come from. Even, even after I finish here, I'm going to Uruguay. So I was wondering, God, Juja? Praise the Lord. But I had to follow that wisdom. I had to do what? Now we are two years here. How many years? Two. Say wisdom of God. Say wisdom of God. Yeah. David never took any step without praying, inquiring. How am I going to defeat my enemies? Amen. Second Samuel chapter number five. Second Samuel chapter number five. We see how David accessed the wisdom of God in the altar of prayer. We are looking at verse number 19, which says, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Should I go against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. You deceive. David will never take any step until he hears from God first. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know nowadays, nowadays when people want to get married, they go to the dating in the internet and they are looking for a wife. And the wife is looking for a husband. Amen. They are using shortcuts. Shortcuts. And when, when they get married, they say, ah, where the going to go? Amen. Because the crisis in the house. But the one God gives you in the order of prayer, you never say like that. You ever thank God forever. Ah, thank you, Father, give me a wonderful wife. And also the wife will be saying, Thank you, Father, give me a wonderful husband. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To your neighbor, inquire from the Lord. Inquire from the Lord. Amen. That's how to access wisdom. Look in the book of James, chapter number one, and verse number five. James, chapter one, and verse number five. Hallelujah. It says like this. If anyone lacks wisdom, if anyone does what? Lacks wisdom. Let him ask of the Lord of God who gives to all men liberally and approaches not and approaches not and it shall be given him verse 6 but let him ask in faith not wavering for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with a wind and tossed amen. amen so God gives wisdom freely to anyone who asks for it in prayer who does what? Ask for it in prayer. So the wisdom of God is available in the order of prayer. It's available in the Bible. And also it's available through the Holy Spirit. Say the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say I need direction. Yes. What step to take? Yes. Amen. Yes. You need direction. What kind of person do you need? Jesus prayed all night before he could select the 12 apostles. Amen. Is that not true? God guided him. Even Jesus needed direction from God. Even Jesus himself. Abraham needed direction from God. God told him, Abraham, yes, come out of your country and of your people. And Abraham obeyed and went out. That is wisdom. That is what? A man who was very poor in his own father's home at age 75, this man was very poor. This man didn't have a child. And he was living in his own father's world. Now God wanted to change his story by guiding him. So it takes wisdom for, some, for someone to be guided 
from poverty to riches. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. That is Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. And then when you go to Genesis chapter 13, verse number 2 or 2, it says, And Abraham became very rich in Keto, in gold, silver, and gold. Amen. Amen. After one, after God guiding him, the next chapter, Abraham was very rich. May the Lord guide you to your own riches in Jesus' name. May the Lord guide you to your own riches in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse number 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, and verse number 15. Say, I need the wisdom of God in whatever I do. Amen. Do you know if you don't have the wisdom of God, people can con you? They can do what? Con you and finish you like that. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Say, I need the wisdom of God to escape the traps of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord visit you today in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's see somebody who got the wisdom of God called Solomon. Follow who? So what we are looking at is how do we access this wisdom? Number one, we must be lovers of God. We must be what? Say, I must be a lover of God. Say, a lover of God. Of God. Okay, let me read Ezekiel chapter 10, verse number 15. It says, the laborer of the foolish wears every one of them because they do not know how to go to the city. It means they don't have the wisdom to go about the city. That's how everyone is wear out. Na kumbuka kwa hizo wakati za zamani ukisikia mtu akisema anaenda Nairobi na hajui ni wapi, anaweza kuja asubuhi na na kuse kupata ni wapi alikuwa anaenda because he doesn't know how to go about the city. The city. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can do a business and wear you out because you love wisdom. Because you do what? Another person will come and do the same business and become a millionaire. Because he has wisdom. Because he has what? Wisdom. Wisdom is the only thing that makes the difference between the poor and the rich. Wisdom. Say I need wisdom. Amen. Number one way to access wisdom, you must be a lover of God. Say I must be a lover of God. Amen. There are many believers who say they love God, but they love God with their mouth. With their what? <laughs> mouth. Mouth. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us see if you truly really love God. Let us go to the first Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3. First Kings chapter 3. Okay, it says. And Solomon, says Solomon, loved the Lord, walking in the status of, the, of David his father, except that he sacrificed, say he sacrificed, burned incense in high places. Amen? And the king went to Gideon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place, a thousand offerings. And Solomon offered unto the altar, verse 5. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. Amen. Amen. Solomon, before he got the wisdom, number one, he loved God. He did what? Yeah. Say he loved God. Love. <laughs> and how do you show you love God? By giving. By what? For God so loved the world. He gave the best thing. That is what is on his side. That's how you show you love God. Lord, God loves us so much that He gave His only Son. That man should not perish, should not what? <laughs> that shows how God loves us. Now, the same man, God is just waiting for him to show his love towards God. So God expects you to show your love to him by giving to him. Say, I must be a giver. 
to access the wisdom of God. Amen. I remember a lady who is still a uh, church member here. She's not here. I mean, I, I think God will come into to, to talk of her story. She was the one who we started with her when I started this ministry in my own house in Rua before we came all the way here. Even once was in the was in my house. Amen. And this lady has suffered poverty for some time. Even I've supported, I've supported her some, several times. But last year, she said, God, she had from God the only cupboard she had in the house to give it to the church. So she came and told me, I was told by God to give my own cupboard. I said, if God has told you, why not? Bring it. So she, she brought it one Sunday, put it there. It is there in my office now. Amen. From that day, her doors opened completely. Now she's a big supplier of oil for the cars and what? Now she's rolling. Now she's telling me, Pasi, tena kuma shamba wali. The same lady who was poor when he started ministry, now she's asking me where to buy the shamba. Say, I must be a giver. Praise the Lord. To access wisdom. So that wisdom to be buying oil and selling, it came from God. It came from where? Yeah, from God. She loved God until she gave the best. And God said, I'm going to show you something. Amen. And with the wisdom of God came upon her. Now she's a comfortable woman. Amen. Amen. Say, I must, I must show my love to my God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number two way to show your love for God is that you must become a soul winner. Become a, come out. Say, a soul winner. Shout better, a soul winner. Yes, we have. Put up your coffee and blow up. Are you a soul winner? I'm not going to come and eat you. Oh, Musa. Hello. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say every believer Amen. is ordained Amen. to win souls for Jesus. If you love Jesus, you will be a soul winner. If you love Jesus, you cannot be ashamed to tell people, I'm born again, are you born again? If you die today, where are you going to go? Are you going to heaven or to hell? Jesus died for you, not to go to hellfire. Will you accept him? That is a believer who loves God. Who does what? He doesn't want to see any man perishing going down to hellfire. Amen. Say there is hell. And every sinner is going there. That's why we should preach to these sinners. Tell them the good news of what Jesus did for them on the cross of Calvary. That's why he led the glory of heaven, came to this world for you and other people who are around here, that they may not go to hellfire. They may not go where? Yeah. To hellfire. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Me, I even tell the believers who are committing sin, I tell them, if you are a believer and you are committing sin, if you die, you go to hell. You go hell? To hell. Because heaven is dedicated for holiness only. Dedicated for what? Holiness. 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 You cannot enter heaven with sin. It's not true. It's not true. You cannot play games with God and think that one day God will overlook the sin. He doesn't overlook. Hello? Say, I must live a holy life. Praise the Lord. And the way to show that you love God, you must become a soul. Say, a soul winner. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. We are starting from verse number 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, is a new creation. It's a new what? All things are passed away. That means lies, fornication, stealing, envy, bitterness, pass away. Have they not? Any form of sin must go. Say it must go. And they say, Behold, all things have become what? New. What is new thing? Righteousness, speaking truth, and holiness. That's what's called new things. You call what? New things. You are living a honest life, upright life. A man who fears God. Say, I fear God. Fear God. 
Amen. Amen. Verse number 18. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Say, every born again person has a ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Bringing people to God, to God. Hallelujah. Yesterday, I preached to a Muslim in a hotel. I was very excited. Praise the Lord. So, our, not, not hotel, sorry. It's going into the Kinyozi. <laughs> sorry for that. It's not hotel, it's a Kinyozi. I was in a Kinyozi. So, I was in a Kinyozi. So, I began to preach to them. As I preached to them, one said, Me, 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 Now, I forgot that one. I concentrated on this Muslim guy. And then, <laughs> they said, Amen. And say, this is why Islam at one meaning, who are Mongolis Aliwa, to a meaning. So I knew, I began to preach to him about the Antichrist because I knew if he understands the Antichrist, he will understand about Jesus. Amen. Amen. So that I told him, Do you know when the rapture will happen, there is a person called the Antichrist who shall come and rule this world and put the number 66 to every point in the forehead and in their hands? The number 66. Say when I try to go more around, okay, now we can answer to the question. Do you know that Antichrist is the devil himself, but he will be born, become a man? Now the same thing, if Satan shall be born and become an Antichrist, that's like the same way Jesus, who is God, was born and became man. I said, okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And as I continue to praise. The gospel to him, he said, Sasa, I may live a killer kitchen. Watch it, you need to be organized. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Every knee must bow to the name of Jesus. Either it's a Muslim, a Muhindi, or whatever it is, every cardinal, they shall all bow to Jesus. They shall do what? Yes, the things in heaven, on earth, and in hell, everything must bow to Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. So, every believer, say, has a ministry of reconciliation. reconciliation. Amen. Verse 19. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not to put the justice upon them, but was committed to ask the word of reconciliation. The word of what? So, every believer has a ministry of reconciliation. Every believer has the word to speak to every sinner to be reconciled back to God. Amen. Let us look in the book of John chapter 15 as we are winding up. John chapter 15 and verse number 2. John chapter 15, verse number 2. You can start from verse number 1. Says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he closes it that he may bear more fruit. He may do what? So every believer must bear fruits for Jesus. Say, I must bear fruits for Jesus. If you don't bear fruits by seeing people saved, the Bible says you shall be cut off Don't to the lake of fire. So imagine how many believers don't evangelize nowadays. There are so many. Very many. Hello? Say, I shall not be cut off. I'll preach to show I love Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why every believer, either you are in your place of work, in business, those people who come around you who are not sinners, who are sinners, begin to preach to them. Amen. Amen. If you die today, where are you going? I said, I don't know. I said, ah, I don't know. You choose where you are here or where you are going to, you are going to go. You want to go to heaven or hell? You know, and all, all of them will say, oh, yes, heaven. Ah, no. <laughs> Do not they go to heaven? Amen. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the door. Is what? Yeah, that's what Jesus said. John chapter 10. I am the door. Hello. In 16, in 14 verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. May you begin to share your life by preaching to sinners in Jesus' mighty name. May sinners begin to surrender to the gospel in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
It is the only part in the book of Luke chapter 15 verse 7 that says, if one sinner repents, the angels in heaven begin to celebrate because of one sinner has repented. One sinner. Hello. Glory to God. May you make heaven glad in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's how you show how you love Jesus. How you do what? Say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. By, action. by action, not by mouth. Yeah, many Christians, they love Jesus by mouth. I love Jesus. Oh. And then they worship. I love you. I love you. But they will never preach. They will never preach. They will never give. It is, it is offering. As a question of my shilling here. Praise the Lord. I love Jesus. <laughs> you don't love him. You must give him the best. You must give him what? Say, I must give Jesus the best. I must give Jesus the best. Amen. I remember when I was going to the when I was saying uh, Praise the Lord. The only money would give us an offering, they must be full of in form of coins. Manot is in a car, like any coins to Zimbabwe, that coin to coin more than you. Amen. Praise the Lord. A little bit of a question, a little bit of knowledge. Do you love Jesus? Yes, I love him. I love him more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's a lie. That's a mouth love. Say that is a mouth love. <laughs> mouth love. The heart is very far from God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I need wisdom. I need wisdom. I'm a child of the most high God. Whatever is born of flesh is flesh. Is what? Flesh. If you are born by your mother and your father, it's the wisdom of your father and your mother you get. If you are born of God, it's the wisdom of God you get. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus told the people of Zeman, He told him, you must be born again. Because that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That is born of the flesh is flesh. God is spirit. God is what? Is spirit. And if you want to access the wisdom of God, you must also be born again in your spirit. Because a child of a dog will possess the wisdom of a dog. It doesn't matter if a child is a big way. Because that is the wisdom of dog. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The child of a slave, the only thing you has is when it sees you, it must bite you. Amen. Amen. Say the wisdom of a slave. Amen. Amen. The wisdom of a sheep. You must say, man, that's the wisdom. Hello? Every child of God, who is born of God, must carry the wisdom of his father God. Amen. Amen. Say, my man, say, I'm a child of God. My mind must carry the wisdom of God. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let's close with that one. Let's close with that one. Because of time. First Corinthians chapter 2. Verse number 16. It says, For those who have the mind of the Lord, okay, for who has the mind of the Lord, that we he may instruct you, but we have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. So when you are born again, what you receive, you receive the mind of Christ. You receive what? Amen. So there is a wisdom deposited in your mind which needs to be stirred up. Amen. Amen. Say there is some wisdom in this head put by God here. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So use your mind. Use what? Mind. Yeah, when you are reading your Bible, don't just read for the sake of reading. Read, meditate. That's why the Bible, God told Joshua, and this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate with your mind day and night. So that you may begin to see, to see things in that world. When you see them, then begin to do them because that's the wisdom. Many believers don't exercise their mind. They say, I'm still waiting on God. Though. I'm still waiting on God. And God will say, I'm still waiting on your mind to work. Your mind must work. Your mind. 
Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say, my mind must work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why people will wait for God for labor and nothing is happening. God is waiting for your mind to work. Say, my mind must work. Say, my mind must work. Those people who are very rich, they don't work it with their hands. They work it with their, say, mind. <laughs> they will be sitting somewhere, closing their legs like this, pushing some buttons at two million in Nigeria. The one that is pushing to continue, amen? And at the, and at the end of home, they are for more amen? What's the difference? One is using the energy of the flesh, other one is using the mind. Using what? Hello? Say I need wisdom from above. Hallelujah. If that is you, be on your feet and begin to ask God to say, Father, I need your wisdom that will change my story in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to ask Jesus for wisdom 